Chef Chuck Riley, of course, from Cafe Zoos at the Hotel Valley Ho. Good morning. Well, it's always great to be cooking with you, and I know you love fresh vegetables as much as I do. Yes. Today we got the beautiful Tuscan kale and spaghetti squash. Ah, and together. if your tomatoes aren't quite there yet in the summertime, well, then you can use a canned tomato. We're going to talk about a little bit about that, too. Okay. And we're going to do the dish with a buttered Parmesan crust. Mm. Delicious. So it's pretty low kale because a lot of people, the best thing to start with making yourself look great for any particular event is to start eating This is light, well. but it's packed with flavor. Oh, good. Okay, so how do we get started? All right. So well, the first thing we're going to do is I have some organic spaghetti squash. Okay. And these things are, are you know, a lot of people are intimidated by yes. squash. They just don't know so. what to do with them. And so, so I cut very carefully. I would keep my hand as much as way when I'm cutting something hard. Okay. And then kind of kind of do the other side the same way. Yeah, all and that's the way not down. a good tip because just cutting these things right. is tricky. Yeah. Right. So once it's in half, again, your knife should be very, very sharp. I go ahead and take the seeds out. Now, these, this particular squash is very, very, very sweet. I love spaghetti squash. It's sweet, but it, it's a nice foil. You can add a lot of different flavors to it. I and it goes, that so long. Oh my gosh. Now I'm going to make it tonight. It goes so good with so many herbs cilantro, basil, I mean, you name it. And then I to take the scrape out the insides. Now I try to cook the seeds and eat them because I try to eat like everything. Like pumpkin seeds? Yeah. Does it work? <laughs> a little tough. Okay. Kids can't handle it. Because so. that's kind of what it looks like in the middle. Go ahead and get them, in, it, get them into the uh, compost pile, as, as Miss uh, Terry would say. Oh. She, she's Mother Earth. I haven't, I haven't done composting yet. That's the next thing. That's the next, the next thing. Right? <laughs> yes. They oh, so you cook them down. Yeah, just I, I put them down. They don't have to be touching. But uh, I just put that in with a little bit of water. Go ahead and you know we want to bake these uncovered, just oh. about 45 minutes until they soften up. No oil, nothing. No just oil. A little bit of just water. Like that. So how long do those get in? What temperature, Chuck? About 375, and then we're going to cook those for about 45 minutes, or until they have a nice little give when you uh, when you squeeze them. Okay, sounds good. Now the butter, the uh, the Parmesan crust. Um, we had went in and browned up some panko breadcrumbs. Oh, panko. Japanese breadcrumbs. Okay, with some butter, right? Right, with a, but a tablespoon of butter. Okay. And that's about a third of a cup. And you can go ahead and pour that right okay. in. Okay. So panko's better than regular breadcrumbs? You can say? use regular, but I don't like to use the seasoned breadcrumbs because I don't want, I like all those like dried herbs and spices in them. Okay. Uh, so I just like it. I like the texture of the panko because it's, it's nice and big. And if you have your own bread, you can stale bread at home, a really good tip is just to cut the crusts off. Put in the Cuisinart and make your bread. Is that what you do? You'd be so proud of me. I did that the other day. I did on a break. Awesome. I had this big. I had a big loaf and it got kind of hard. I'm like, I'm gonna do a Chuck said, and I made meatballs. Right. They turned out really good. If you use that bread, I mean, okay. I just love the texture. I love I the crunchy it. crispness of that. And I that's did. why I brown them in the butter. All right. Then I have a third of a cup of Parmesan Reggiano. I was gonna ask you, how did you grate this? Because when I grate mine, it's much more fine. So is it just a bigger whole grater? Well, I use an electric grater for this, and that's why it's got these little balls. But you can any way you want it. I just like to mimic the same size of the bread. Oh, okay. So I one third cup of, of cheese. Let's get it all in there. We don't and want I've got to that that's stuff. exactly. All right. Scoop it all in your okay. truck. You worked hard to grate like all right. okay. So okay. cheese and then... And then we have a quarter of a cup of pine nuts that I just uh, toasted and then chopped very uh, coarsely. And then Same size. Give me two tablespoons of that. So maybe that's three, but give me about two. Mm -hmm. That looks a little, a little bit more. Good. That looks great. And that's going to be our crust. Oh, for the okay. Right. That's now we have we have some tomatoes going on over here, and they're not fresh tomatoes, they're canned tomatoes. But you know, in a pinch, when the less tomatoes are really, really good, canned tomatoes are usually a little bit better. Yeah, they are. They, they I really noticed are. that. Do you like a certain brand better? Well, I like these uh these pastines. They're they're grown in California, but uh, they uh, are whole tomatoes. And if you look at these, and you can get a shot of these tomatoes. You like the whole tomatoes? I like the whole ones that are peeled. It's because I like to put the whole thing in there and then kind of break it up with a spoon so you can, you have the chunks, the texture. Okay. And then, well, the other thing we're going to do is, uh, is get some of this, talk about some of this uh, beautiful Tuscan kale. So we're going to start with a tablespoon of olive oil here. Kale is like heavy mm. emergence, boy. Everyone knows it's nice and dark and leafy green and people are getting into kale. Love it's it. taken over. Love it. You're going to see this at the farmer's market now. Yes. You're going to see all the squash. But this kale is so beautiful. And you know, the, the thing about it is, you were telling me you don't even need to cook it. Um, I haven't. But no. yeah. I don't cook it. I what I Because I had some people mm. for dinner. Like, how'd you get your kale so soft? I did put the dressing on and let it sit for a few minutes. Right. I don't know if that made a difference. And I chopped it fine. Absolutely. Um, but I took the ribs. You can see. Yes, and take the Yeah, Lisa. Yeah, so you know. The ribs aren't really that tough. 
but you could take them, and I would take these ribs now, and I would actually take the ribs and cut them up and throw them in oh, the for a minute. Okay. And we have these nice tender greens that we're just going to throw in there, probably right at the end when we throw in the spaghetti squash. Now see, the garlic is going, you don't want to ever brown the garlic, no. that's going to give you no. a real bitter taste. And it smells really good, just that oil and garlic. Delish. Nothing better than that combination right there. Delish. So, so you're going to make like a sauce then to put on the squash? Mm -hmm. Okay. So what we're going to do is, I'm going to heat these tomatoes up with this garlic. I'm just going to, I just wanted to get this garlic fragrant. I can smell it. Just right now. And then it's going to cook with the tomatoes and the squash and the kale a little bit. So that's about all I want to cook it now because I don't want to take on any color. And then the tomatoes come in? Yeah. yeah. So you use the whole can? I use one can. One is and I think in the recipe that's on your website, it calls for two 14 ounce cans. This is one 28 ounce. Okay. Do the math on that. But look at this. Look at how beautifully red, bright these are. And I'm not going to ruin your. Yeah, I was waiting for it to go squirt. <laughs> but you break up yourself versus cutting like stewed or chopped tomatoes. You know, in this recipe, I just love the way these whole tomatoes look. Okay. So we're going to go ahead and get these simmering. Wait for the spaghetti squash to get done, and then we're going to put this whole dish together in a little bit. Gotcha. And is the kale going to go with it, too, then? Yeah, the kale will go in right at the very end, because, again, we don't want to overcook it. So we're going to put it in right at the very end, okay. just kind of blanch it, and then we're going to serve it. Okay. And I have to admit, a lot of people, my friends, are like, oh, you're getting good with your cooking. And it's because I do get great tips from chefs like you, and you're going to give you. us a tip coming up in a little yeah, bit, right? A little bit. All right. Something so Something completely unrelated. It's the tips. <laughs> That make the cooking. Once you get these little tips, sounds like oh, and then it all starts and to make practice. sense and a little bit of practice. Right. That's right. Thank you, Chuck. You're so if you want this recipe for this yummy spaghetti squash, which I can't wait to try, go to our website azfamily.com forward slash your life call our hotline. But if you just look in that recipe search, you'll find it there. Thanks again, Chuck. Add some okay. pepper. No, just a little pepper in the okay. parmesan. Just don't want to miss that step. <laughs> yeah, that's very, the key. Very important. And you're making one of my favorite things. Thank you. Well, Please. it's one of my favorites too. And you know. Um, there's, you know, of course, we are used to the dark beets or the yeah. dark bread or the purple beets. I'm using golden beets today. And you'll see these at the farmer's market. Uh, these are from Blue Sky Farms. Very, very, uh, it's a local farm. And, you know, with the thing about beets, when you buy them with the tops on like this, is that you get, uh, you double your value because the beet greens are so delicious. Oh, they are? They're they like kale? Oh, my gosh. They're just like, you know, use them in a salad. Oh, but okay. Very good sauté as well. Okay. Mm. So don't throw away the tops of those beets. Mm -hmm. I've the, never seen that color beet before. The stems are a little, going to be a little bit tough, but well, these are these are golden beets, and then you have all some variegated styles of beets. But they, we call these Titleist, and you know why? No. Well, the Titleist golf ball. Oh, I know Titleist they, golf. Right, they, they're the size of a golf ball. Oh, I see. Okay, right. I gotcha. And so what we do is we take these beets, and we take keep the greens. Now the, the ribs are going to be a little tough, but again, chop those up and saute them. Don't get rid of them. And then when you cut the edges edges off like this. Give them a little bit of a wash, and you have that beautiful color. And then we roast these. I toss them in just a little tiny bit of oil, salt, and pepper, and I put them in a little roasting pan covered for about 45 minutes, about 375 degrees, just like the spaghetti squash, until they're fork tender. Do you? So you leave the skin on when you roast? I leave the skin on. Very, very important. Okay. And the tip today is not what I just told you. Okay. <laughs> okay. Well, I'm learning. I'm like, because oh, I, I like beets. I right. know I want to learn more about beets. The tip today <gasps> is actually taking off the skin. So I did roast these with the skin on, and what, what you can see, they get to give off a little bit of their liquid. And again, we did it, we cooked these until they were just fork tender. Fork tender means we could push a fork in and get very, very little resistance. You don't want it to be hard in the center. Okay. And then, so you only have olive oil, salt, and pepper. Olive oil, salt, and pepper, and just a tiny little bit of olive oil too. Okay. And I roasted these with the cover on. Very, very important with the cover on because that could help to steam them so the skins come off just like roasted peppers. That might be my problem. Then when I pull them out, I let them sit for 10 minutes just to be sure the skins are going to come off easy. Now they come off a little easier when they're warm, but you can see oh, with, a pa with a paper towel and then you don't waste any. And look at that beautiful color. So you just oh, rub it off. I didn't know that. With a paper towel. And again, I'm cheating. I'm not using the purple bead because I'm if it, you know, using a purple bead. My hands would be purple. Well, I was going to ask you that. If you use the purple, you make easy maybe stained you fingers, wear, right, right? Maybe you want to wear some gloves. That's the problem with those purple beets. They really make a mess. But you were just talking off camera about this. You're one of your favorite salads yes. with the beets and goat cheese. This is the time to do it. Get these beautiful organic beets. You can get bigger ones, and they're still going to be good. But I just prefer these little ones that just seem to be a little bit sweeter, a little bit more flavorful. And ah. just rub the skins right off like that. Ah, I like 
like it. Are you ever going to teach us how to make your incredible pickle feet? I will. I promise it. Just one I day, on I have to feel it. I just have to feel it. <laughs> he makes the best pickle feet salad. We, we serve at Zuzu all the time. I we, highly recommend that salad. With our Ani sliders. See? Yeah. Big thumbs up on that one. Thank, Thank you. you, Chuck. I had no idea. And these do not stain your fingers. I like they that. They don't stain your fingers. Well, a little bit, but still. Not like the purple ones. And they're good for you. They're so good in salad. <laughs> so you want to fit into those jeans. This is the way you get it. Eat a beet salad. Right. Because then the beet will go on and on and on. I had to. Sorry. I just hurt <laughs> myself. Thank you, Chuck, for that. You're great. Welcome. Oh, one quick question. If I don't have a nice pan like this with the lid, you know your typical white, um, what are they called? Ramekin kind of things with the yeah. glass lid. Yeah. Will that work? You can use a glass lid. You can cover it with tin foil any way you want to do it. Just try to get the lid on as tight as you can so as little steam escapes as possible. Got it. I'm going to go home and make these tomorrow. I just have to go find the golden ones because I don't want those red ones because they stain. Farmer market. All right. Old and you don't lose it cutting off the skin. <laughs> Thank you, Chuck. You're that welcome. is a good tip. So don't forget, if you want this tip or you want the recipe that we're making, always go to our website. We'll have them there for you. Welcome back. We're with the Chef Chef Wally from Cafe Zuzu at the Hotel Valley Home, finishing up the spaghetti squash. We took it out of the oven, obviously. We took it out. We baked it, it, it and you can see it just—it's still a little bit, you know, warm, okay. and so, but it's cool to the touch. And then, you know, I got it in half, took out the seeds, and then what you have here is that we call it spaghetti squash because it just comes out and it looks just like spaghetti. Now I'm taking one of these out and look. One thing that I do, I like, is that it comes right out of the shell so easy, and you just kind of fluff it out with a fork. Mm -hmm. And nice. you don't waste any of it, just like the beets that I was showing earlier. It just, you know, the, the, the shell just Isn't comes right out. I know. It, that works. It, it, I mean, sometimes cool? you just kind of wonder, like, somebody was thinking when they created this. Let's try to Right. right. There you go. Make a I go, eventually it looks like spaghetti. Yeah. Now, it doesn't right. taste like spaghetti. It's going to taste whatever we really want it to okay. taste like. And today we've chosen not only the kale, but also some tomatoes, a little bit of garlic. Now you can put onions in here, but you know, I always tell your viewers when you cook, try to use a little restraint. Try to limit the amount of ingredients. Okay. If you don't want it to really complicate it, keep it simple so you can really taste everything. Now okay. we started our tomatoes and garlic earlier, and we were kind of breaking those up. Yeah, that's all we put in them. It's but then I was afraid to, the, the tomato to squish it Get me? Like if I if I really pushed on that. Do you want me to do it so you no. can Okay, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Do you want me to use this? Yeah. Okay, careful. so if anybody does it, it's my fault. My own fault. Okay. I'll break these up. Go ahead. There you go. So we have our spaghetti squash. Now this started life as about a, oh, I guess it was three pounds. Uh -huh. I think that's the number on your website. If it's a little bit less, a half pound less, a half pound more, it's okay. But this will easily feed six to eight people. And you're going to have a little bit left over too, which you is think always we can, nice. Can we fool the kids again? It's real spaghetti, Chuck? We'll be calling. Yeah, spaghetti. they won't know. Spaghetti. You want me to mix all this up together then? Yeah, mix it up. Okay, go ahead. Let's go. Okay. And, then, uh, and then, of course, a little salt and pepper. Okay. And I always like to use kosher salt. You can use sea salt, but I don't like the iodized salt necessarily because no. it just has a kind of a funky uh, taste to it. And I like kosher too because I like to be able to feel it between my fingers so I know, I kind of want to kind of measure it exactly how much to use. I've got some good Hawaiian salt. <laughs> yeah, I love to play with different salt. And Maybe. you can not to, you don't need a lot of it, no. but it really brings out the flavor. Is that pepper that you're putting in? Yes. Okay. Fresh pepper, just like coffee, I always grind it to order. All right. What else do you put in here? So that, that's just going to be about it. Now mix that up really I am good. Trying. <laughs> I'm trying. I usually use a spoon, so you have all this fancy stuff. Well, you know, you're, you're using my um, my special a wooden spoon that I call I call it my polenta spoon. Because oh. I see, show the viewers the bottom of the spoon. See, it's, it's flat, so you really get the bottom of the pan. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right, I can get one of those. Okay. Now, next thing we're going to do is we're going to add the kale. Now, I've taken the kale. And I've just, some of these littler leaves, I've just kind of torn them like this. Some of the larger ones, I've taken the rib out. But I'm going to use maybe a half pound. And this is going to, again, wilt up. Sure, like spinach? A little bit. Not yeah. as much as spinach, probably. Yeah. Now, this started out about a half pound. You can use more or less, whatever you like. But I think that's about it. Do I need to mix it in or just leave it on top? You no, know, you could leave it on top. We'll go ahead and cover it. And then what we're going to do is when we come back, I think we're going to, this is going to be all nice and wilted, and we're going to go ahead and put on our nice uh, buttered parmesan pine nut goods. Oh, uh, and that's going to give us our nice texture. I can't wait. Don't forget, the recipe is always on our website, so check it out there. Thanks, Chuck. We'll be right back. Mr. Chef Chuck Wiley, and look at that. It's all wilted down beautifully. That's it. Isn't that all gorgeous? Really, like two minutes. It's that. It, I that's can't all wait. it takes. That's I can't all wait to make this. My sister's pregnant. And she's craving kale. That's what oh. she wants. That's a good thing to crave. Oh, wait, don't want to forget the top. Oh, right. Yeah. 
Yeah. Let's go ahead and put that on. It's going to give us a nice texture, a little bit more salt, a cheesy goodness. Mm. That was that. That's it. Yeah. That's it. Beautiful. Manja, manja. <laughs> a nice healthy dish. Whatever that means. Manja, eat up. It's oh, Italian. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say, I was like, sure, yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Chuck. You're welcome.